What's up freaks? Welcome back to day three of Freak Week. So today I'm about to tell you a very freaky story about someone who is uh, very freaky and his name is Carl Tanzler. And when I get into this story, you're going to understand why I chose this for this week because this is such a cringy, creepy, bizarre story. But before we get started, I just wanted to quickly remind you guys that the Freak Week shirts are available. They will be available until like November 1st and 20% of the profit from these shirts is going directly to Thorn. Anyway, let's get into it. So this is Carl Tanzler. Strange looking dude, huh? He was born on February 8th, 1877 in Dresden, Germany. He is a very strange dude and I will get into why, but there are very few details when it comes to his early life, his parents, his family. Um, but we do know that he had one sibling who was a sister and Carl was a very bright and curious kid. Around 1920, he married a woman named Doris Anna Schaefer, and the two of them had two children together named Aisha and Clarista. However, Clarista actually died from a bacterial infection in her throat, and she was only 10 years old. But obviously it was very common in this day and age for kids to die young. So like I mentioned earlier, Carl was just a strange bird. He was just known to be kind of a weird dude that just never really fit in with people, was always a little awkward, a little off. And people who knew him said that he was actually very highly opinionated and also really egotistical and kind of into himself. And this is really strange, but when he was a kid, he claimed that he had a dream and that in his dream, one of his relatives who had passed away came to him and he said that they came to him telling him about his one true love describing her. He described her as an exotic, dark haired beauty. And Carl said from that day on, he carried the memory of this mystery girl in his dreams with him into his adulthood. In 1926, Carl Tanzler emigrated to the United States and he settled down in Zephyr Hills, Florida with his family. But within a year of moving in, he decided to abandon them all and take off and move to Key West by himself. So Carl ended up working at a US Marine hospital, which was intense because he worked in the tuberculosis unit. And tuberculosis was a major problem back then. People were dying from it left and right. They had no idea what was causing it. It was way more deadly back then, obviously. The doctors really didn't know what to do. So basically he was working around people that were dying all day. And Carl was definitely a bullshitter because he always claimed that he knew some type of cure or technique, some, you know, untested secret method to heal people. But these claims that he made were extremely vague and he never backed them up with any evidence. So it's actually likely that he had no formal education at all. But you know, it was back then when anything goes. And it was really sad for him. I mean, tons of Carl's friends and acquaintances ended up having tuberculosis and he watched all of them die. Being around that many deaths, especially when you know the people, is obviously going to take a really hard emotional toll on you and it definitely did for Carl. So Carl really wasn't the most stable person in the world right now. But then in April of 1930, a woman named Maria Elena Milagro or Helen had checked into the hospital while Carl was working as an x-ray technician and she was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which you know at that time was just a death sentence basically. It was such a shame because she was only 21 or 22 years old. It's not exactly confirmed. She was a beautiful young Cuban woman. She was actually married but her husband had like ditched her so she was still technically married to him but she was alone in this hospital dying of tuberculosis and she was just beautiful I mean Jeez. Carl was 55 at the time and he began to develop a type of friendship with her. I'm sure she was just friendly and he was friendly to hospital, you know, it's bedside manner as you can call it. But then it became a little bit more for Carl. He started to form really strong feelings for her and he did not hold back at all. He was constantly telling her how he was in love with her and showering her with gifts, which I mean, can you imagine being 21 or 22 years old, like dealing with that? People that witnessed 
their relationship, if you even want to call it one, said that she pretty much just dealt with him. It was just one-sided and, you know, she didn't really want anything to do with him, but he was obsessed with her. So what's crazy is he became so desperate to save Helen that he ended up just ignoring the hospital's protocol about his job description, what he was able to do for people, and started playing doctor with Helen with at-home treatments that he was literally like creating in his house. But no matter how hard he tried to cure her, Helen died in 1931. And this is so weird, but Carl didn't want to bury her in the ground. Not that it was, you know, his job to bury her at all. She did have a family. Um, I'm not sure if they were close with her. It didn't seem like they were, I mean, that involved with her towards the end. And they didn't really care. So he went to them and said, hey, I don't want to bury her underground because water might leak in there and contaminate her body and like screw her up basically. So I would like to build her a mausoleum, which if you don't know, mausoleum is like an above ground grave thing. Like a lot of cemeteries have them. So he built this big ass thing for her, asked her family. I mean, they weren't going to say no, they didn't have any money. So they were like, you want to build her this huge thing? Sure, go for it. So he built her a huge above ground tomb. So, you know, the family mourns her, everyone moves on, right? Well, little did the family know, Carl was actually one of the only, or was the only person with a key to the mausoleum. And so every night he would go in there just to hang out with her. And I mean, her family had no idea he was sneaking in there. And when he would visit her, he would try to um, like spruce up her body. He would actually bring formaldehyde and try to like preserve her for longer. And about two years in, he started hearing her according to him, talking to him and asking for him to take her out of the grave. So he felt like he needed to save Helen. So he ended up building a laboratory for this exact purpose. And late one night, he snuck into the mausoleum and he stole Helen's body, loading her up into a toy wagon and brought her back to his house. Now people, let's all imagine what she was like at this point, okay? So obviously they preserved her with formaldehyde so she's not in terrible condition, but like she's been dead for two years. This is disgusting. And Carl did everything that he could to try to better preserve her body. He used tons of preservatives on her as an attempt to save as much of her as he could. And he also would just douse her body in perfume. Obviously there was still a smell though of rotting body. Decomposing body is supposed to be like the worst smell ever. So I can't even imagine how this dude was dealing with this in his house. So once the decomposition got really bad, Carl started to use more extreme methods to preserve her body, such as securing her bones with piano wire, replacing her eyeballs with glass replicas. Obviously eventually her skin all fell off and Carl decided to do a little DIY project and cover her in like a wax type paper mache situation. He dressed her in the clothes that she wore before she died and he had a wig of her own hair for her. And then there was a few times that Carl actually tried to freeze her body but every time that he did this she felt more like a doll and less of a person. Eventually her organs all started deteriorating as they are supposed to naturally. Her body started collapsing and so he started filling it with rags and other random materials to help keep her shape. Now this is really gross, but he actually made a paper tube um, lady part and would, yeah. I'm sure you can guess from there. Now, just when you think this dude can't get any freakier, we find out that he actually had plans to launch Helen's body into space. He thought that doing this would somehow resurrect her and bring her back. He literally had like a launch pad that he was planning on somehow sending her off to space. He's gonna shoot her body out of that, people. <laughs> What the fuck? But then in 1940, nine years after Helen died, her sister actually was hearing rumors about Carl keeping her sister's body in her house. And she decided to go to his house and check to see if this was true. And when she got there, she found her sister's body dressed in the clothing that she was wearing before she died. Clearly she called the police, Carl was arrested and given a psychiatric evaluation, thank God. He was found competent to stand trial and was officially charged with maliciously destroying a grave and removing a body without authorization. However, the statute of limitations had expired for the grave robbery, so 
no one was punished for this. And then Helen's body, even though it's been through so much already, they decide to put her body on display for the public to view. And over 6,000 people came. It was like a media frenzy. I don't know what is up with this. I mentioned it earlier this week in another video about people in the old times putting bodies on display. It's so weird. They would never do that now. These are literally pictures from the public viewing. Now, even though what Carl did was savage and disgusting, a lot of women and just people out there felt bad for him or kind of looked at him in a good way. They thought it was sweet and romantic and loving of him. For the rest of his life, Carl still claimed he was in love with Elena, and this dude actually had the balls to ask the police if he could have her corpse back. And obviously they said, um, fucking no. They ended up having to bury it in an unmarked grave so that there was no chance Carl could go find it and like dig it back up again. In 1944, Carl moved to Paso County, Florida, which is close to Zephyr Hills, where he wrote an autobiography Towards the end of his life, he ended up getting back together with his previous wife that he just ditched. Like, can you imagine getting back together with that dude after knowing what he's been doing all those years? Um, what? But anyway, Carl ended up passing away on July 3rd of 1952. And when they found his body, he was actually with a life-size doll wearing a plaster mask that looked like Helen. There were actually even some rumors that he somehow switched out the bodies and actually did have her corpse in the last few days of his life, but that's probably not true. He probably wasn't able to find it. So. Yes, definitely one of the weirdest stories I have ever heard. I cannot imagine bringing a dead corpse out of the ground, but like, yeah, in a way, I guess it's kind of romantic, but then you realize that she wanted nothing to do with him. Like if he was in love with her, she was in love with him, they were married, then I, I would think it's kind of, kind of cute in a weird fucked up way, but he was definitely just like a creepy stalker. And yeah, so Carl Tanzler wins freakiest of all time, I think. But that's it for me today, guys. Be sure to to subscribe and turn on your notifications because I will be back tomorrow and every day until Halloween with more freaky content for you. But that's it for me today, guys. I will see you next time.